Oslo, New York, I don't know. <laughs> you have some sort of identity crisis. Oslo Freedom Forum in New York. Hello, Basem. Welcome yes. to New York Oslo Freedom Forum, even that it sounds an oxymoron. Yes. Starting with your book. Yes, you have uh, it, it is in your uh, swag, by the way. If you open your bag, you're going to find a book. It's mine. So I'm kind of like shamelessly promoting myself. Okay. And if you want his signature, you pay $5 to me. <laughs> this is how we make our money. <laughs> okay, the name of the book is Revolution for Dummies. And I did the one before, which is called The Blueprint for Revolution. So what about these titles? Is this the lack of imagination or you need to steal my title? I mean, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You're claiming that I stole your title? So <laughs> maybe that's why our revolution failed. Uh, no. uh, <laughs> I don't know, do you have the copyrights for the name Revolution? <laughs> um, okay. Ah, your inspiration, Sergi, come on, of course, yeah, baby. All right. Amen. Okay, yes. So proud to call you a friend. Mm. Okay, now to the serious, more serious things. Yes. Uh, Milosevic has arrested the barrel with his face on it together with the people who post it. Uh, Russians have uh, banned the toy protests. Egyptians have kicked you out because of mocking the government. What's wrong with these people? Is this a lack of sense of humor? Or? Yeah, that's the, the, the thing that all dictators have in common. I mean, uh, lack of the sense of humor. Uh, of course, the repercussions are different. If you are in a certain country, you might be kicked out. If you are in another country, the president uh, angrily tweets at you, like here. So it's kind of like, it seems that like all dictators are thin-skinned or orange-skinned, and they... Uh, <laughs> And, 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 they, and they can take it. And, and, I, and I'll tell you why. There is a reason. Like, uh, 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 like, because for them, most dictators are failures. They have nothing else going on for them. The only thing that's going on for them is fear and respect. Mm -hmm. so we have to respect and fear me. And sarcasm and laughter takes this away from them. Mm -hmm. So what, they have nothing else going on for them. They, they, this is it. So, and most of them come either from a religious authority or a, or a military authority or a business authority, money authority. I don't know here. Um, I don't know. A reality show authority. Uh, so it's for them, the hierarchy of military and religious authoritarian regimes, it's kind of like it's blind respect and fear and following the rules. You're not, you're not allowed to mock your, uh, um, uh, your commander-in-chief or your leader or your sheikh or your priest or whatever. So th this is why they consider uh, you laughing at them is undermining their authority. Yeah, but that, does it have something to do with, you know, this fake image they have of themselves? Exactly. They're just spending too much time watching themselves on the TV, so it, they it, start believing this image? The, uh, yes. They start attacking this image, exactly. then this becomes and, a huge problem. And the people around them feed into that, so it's, uh, that's why when I said it's the fake respect and the fake fear. Amazing. In your book, you have the whole chapter on propaganda. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, so this is, this is the second step. So it's uh, fear. And, uh, and then and respect, propaganda. And then you have to uh, convince the people that this is actually good for them. So they start to uh, make uh, fake achievements, fake claims for achievements. How if, many of them have found the cure for AIDS? Up yes. To now? So there's a whole thing about like how the uh, military authority claimed that they found a cure for AIDS. And this is a trend. It happened in Gambia 2008. It's happening right now, right now in North Korea. It seems that like when everything is failing, they found a cure for AIDS. And the thing is, <laughs> they, when they did that, people believed them not because it was a believable uh, uh, claim, but because they couldn't imagine that the army, this uh, very respected entity, would lie to them. Mm. There were actually people... So they believe the source, not yeah, the information. Yeah, it's just like, oh, whatever they, the army tells us, it's true. I, I had even have people in my team, in my team, that they were scared to work on the segment where we're going to mock that discovery because they were telling me, this is the army. What if it's true? I mean, they can make a fool out of themselves. This is preposterous. And I had to kind of like... Uh, go back to my doctor's uh, hat and kind of explain Not to them. Not this big hat. Not yeah, yeah. No, no, hat. the doctor's hat. And, and try to explain to them the life cycle of viruses to tell them that this is bullshit. And, uh, <laughs> it, and, and, and there were like doctors and medical institutes. They couldn't speak out, out either out of like blind faith in the military or uh, fear. And, 
It's been uh, four years now, and there was no, there's no cure. Of Surprisingly. There is. Of course there is. You yeah. just need to believe in it. Yeah, though, yes. Back to this propaganda, working with groups across the world, and I mean, being an activist myself, there is this very limited number of stickers that the dictators will put on whoever opposes them. Of course, we all agree that that's, this is to create a fake picture, that people are sheep, and maybe if they demand change, this is because somebody master puppeting them. So they start with you being seduced by evil Serbs concretely in Egypt, mm -hmm. continue with you being non-patriotic, moved into you being traitors, foreign mercenary, I was Soros, CIA, whatever. What have you been? You have been my mercenary or something like no, that? I, is this I, I, one I, I, single playbook? Yeah, it is, it is like a kind of like a couple of pages where there are like a very limited number of accusations that they throw around. So you are uh, non-patriotic, you hate uh, your country, you're a self-hating Jew, Christian, Muslim, uh, you do, you're an infidel, of course. Uh, you have been, in your you are, case, you're, you're, you're even vegan. Uh, yeah, I'm, in my case, I'm vegan. I and know. that, by the way, is even more controversial than being uh, an atheist. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so, like, yeah, so it's like if, if I went to, it's like, guys, I don't believe in God, all right? And then it's like, um, I'm vegan. What? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's just like, and they try to kind of accuse you of your, like, like you, know, you don't believe in God, you are an atheist, you're, and this is, of course, is, is a good enough uh, reason for you to be uh, discredited. And if doesn't that, that don't work, all right, he, uh, he has a, they go into sex scandals. Of course. Oh, he is homosexual. Or he has, like, uh, sex with... I've been like, junkie as well. Uh, so I, I, oh, I, of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then, but, like, I think one of the craziest accusations that was told about me is that uh, I, uh, uh, there are two officers from the CIA they have been residents in the middle of Cairo, and they are um, um, kind of like overseeing my training mm. uh, in Egypt, and they use John Stewart in order to recruit me, which is like... <laughs> well, but well, but I, they, it's proven and, and, to be true. I, I've seen you with John Stewart on TV. I, I mean, John Stewart right now is nowhere to be found, so maybe it's true. And I mean, okay, he, dis he disappeared. I mean, he tells you that he's in the animal Mysteriously farm. disappeared. Mm. So how do, you how do you fight this? Because, I mean, obviously the role of this propaganda from what we understand, movements become successful when they build towards the mainstream of society. And they want to create a social distance between you, the evil guy, and the society that you want to recruit. So how do you play offense? How do you play defense? I mean, my, my way to fight it was game. using humor and satire. But like there's, I always say there's only much that satire can do because a lot of people who are living there in and out, who don't have the luxury to leave or travel or escape, I mean, they have to believe something. And a lot of people, and, and this is something I came up with, is that like a lot of people are uh, willing to uh, suspend their disbelief mm -hmm for the sake of their beliefs. Nice, huh? Basim Yusuf 2017. <laughs> Love it. Trademark. If anybody tweets it, I'm gonna get your ass. <laughs> Anyways, so. But dude, I mean, this is playing the defense. Okay, I mean, when you look at the football, you have a defense and the offense. And obviously there are creative ways to do the defense. Satire is one of that. Yeah. I mean, the most popular badge in Serbia in the 90s was I would like to live in the country from state TV news. Mm -hmm. I know that this is not that country, but if there is one, this is where I would like to live. The Polish people were putting their TV sets in a strollers and then strolling them during the time of the TV news. But that's a defense. More seriously, are we lacking the positive narrative or the offense nowadays in the world? I mean, the, the offense world? is information, is, is, is the fluidity Fruitful of information. information. But what would you do if people don't want to listen to the information? What do you do? I mean, and, and this is a problem that we're having right here in the United States. The most secular, the leader of the free world and everything. People are, uh, whatever facts that you give them, they don't want to, they, they you don't want to believe uh, uh, climate change. Uh, the, the thing about climate change, even if the hurricane uh, like uh, hits them in the butt. It doesn't matter. It, it's it, it's liberal propaganda, dude. You your home is flooded. No, doesn't matter. It, it's uh, uh, there is a catfish in uh, your uh, living room. It, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just like being very practical because we, I can give you a whole message of um, uh, of hope and yes, we can fight. But there are some people who will not change their beliefs. Not just here, everywhere. Not just like military supporters, uh, uh, religious supporters. It's People will just like uh, stick to their beliefs because if you take this, 
mm -hmm. piece of information that they dearly hold on to, their whole belief system will fall down like a house of cards. It's, it's just like they can't. That's why they will not even discuss it. They will not even like, they're not going to listen to you. But do you think the human stories, like your story, my story, story of the people yeah, here but like, getting together are kind of resonate great, powerfully? But, but you have to have humans who are receptive to listen to those stories. I mean, this room is receptive, but like you can actually go to another room and they say like, oh, no, and everybody will interpret it in the way they want to interpret in order to um, kind of like uh, blend within their own belief system. So, oh, for example, really a lot of people saw me escaping the country, saw me like having my show uh, shut down. The way they interpreted, oh, they, he was shut down because of um, lack of advertisement and rating. I had 40 million people watching the show. I was like, no, 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 no. Um, me and two of my friends weren't watching him, and that was enough for him to be shut down. You said, it's a, oh, oh uh, he, he, he is a traitor. He is uh, um, uh, uh, some sort of an operative of uh, uh, some secret society. Well, they will find a way. If there, is a, if there is a trend of these, I mean, we were discussing this earlier, and we obviously know that North Korea is a, is a big jail, and you just told me over the lunch that your government is super proud that they have built the biggest jail in... Oh, we are the proud owners of one of the biggest uh, uh, prisons in Africa. Is actually focusing on these walls and building across these differences and this paranoia actually what we need to do in order to prevent people turning Egypt's of this world into gigantic jails? And how do we do this? Well, again, I mean, we can discuss here for hours all of the solutions that, will, uh, uh, that might turn a dictatorship into a democracy. But what would you do if this dictatorship is supported by very rich and powerful um, allies in the region, and that are having uh, the, the great powers in, of Europe and America kind of turning a blind eyes because for them, mm, security comes first because they don't want another Syria, because they don't want another refugee crisis at their hands. And I know that this is not like a huge message of hope. It's like, I can give you, yes, it's gonna change. It is just gonna take time. And the only hope that you, it is left is that the availability of information because hopefully there are like a whole younger generation coming out right now who uh, have access to information, who have access to internet, stuff that his parents, the people who supported these kind of uh, authoritarian regimes, didn't have. So maybe it will be difficult to brainwash them. Maybe it's be more difficult to uh, have propaganda act on them. So it, me, it, I have it, millennials in my office, they, they, they don't, just don't listen to the orders. Yeah, it, it, that's a good start. It's, this is a generational issue and it has to start somewhere. Okay, so let's hope it will start uh, in our lifetime. We are not getting younger. Uh, looking at these targets, I mean, of course, because I trained you and that was after the CIA trained you and that was before the Oliver trains you. Uh, you know what I'm thinking about it. You want to put your strong points against your open and weak points. And if real support or the beginning of the lack of support for these guys starts where you can hit them, which is in democratic countries, which don't show real support for the movements, in this country, what is your next big challenge or your next big mission here in the United States? I mean, I'm, I'm coming... I mean, you basically... It's kind, of like I, I, it's, it's kind of like I left a dictatorship back home and I'm coming here and I'm finding people having a nice taste for dictatorships. Like, suddenly it's like, oh, we like that. Maybe we'll try it. And uh, I'm, I'm starting to believe maybe it's me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like someone, you know, kind of like you, when you fart there on the corner and you run fast, but this <laughs> thing kind of follows you. And uh, so, uh, but, but maybe the next big challenge is kind of like talk and try to uh, counteract the narrative that we, I mean, I'm, I'm an immigrant, I'm a Muslim, Arab, and Middle Eastern, you know, kind of like a very unfortunate genetic pool now. And, uh, and maybe we try to change the narrative about people who look like me, who, people who sound like me, not, not necessarily Muslim, not necessarily Middle Eastern. Anybody who looks like different from a new Nazi, you know, that's it. So let's hope we will try to somehow bridge with this difference and uh, build around the commonalities, not the differences. Thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.